a container vessel sailing on high seas, was expected to reach port at Boston in two days. The vessel had encountered bad weather for nearly five days since she departed her last port. The main engine speed was set at 115 RPM. However, since the weather was bad, the governor limited the main engine RPM to 108. The ship's staff heaved a sigh of relief as the sea turns calm. The chief engineer noticed that the main engine RPM was still at 108 and that the load indicator on the electronic governor was showing high. After checking all the parameters of the engine and the weather outside, the chief engineer found that there was no cause for the overload. He inferred that the governor was malfunctioning and informed the captain, who in turn informed the technical superintendent. As a technical superintendent, what would you have done? Two days later, vessel arrived in Boston. The pilot boarded the vessel at 1600 hours and started maneuvering at 1612 hours. At 2025 hours, the governor failure alarm got activated. The alarm was reset and the ship continued its passage. The bridge gave stop engines command at 2200 hours, and the main engine stopped. The same alarm activated again. A little while later, the bridge gave movements in both the ahead and astern directions. The engine turned on air, but failed to pick up on fuel. At 2204 hours, bridge handed over control to the engine control room. The engine did not pick up on fuel even from the engine control room. Finally, the control was changed over to emergency control station at 2206 hours, and the vessel proceeded safely to berth. The ship staff started troubleshooting as soon as the vessel reached the berth. They found that the power cord of the governor was found defective, and there were no spares on board. The technical superintendent was informed, and he arranged for spare along with a service engineer. How to prevent recurrence? It must be ensured that governor-critical spares are genuine and available on board at all times. The equipment must be serviced by shore experts regularly, since such expertise and equipment may not be available on board. Root cause analysis. Failure of the power cord was due to voltage fluctuation which was due to malfunctioning of the UPS. The UPS that was replaced earlier was not meant for marine use. 